APGO Basic Science Video Topic Pelvic Organ Prolapse Pelvic organ prolapse is the descent of one or more of the pelvic structures. Herniation of structures can descend to or through the vaginal opening. Pelvic organ prolapse is common, with approximately 10% of women undergoing surgical procedures for prolapse or incontinence during their lifetime. While many women are asymptomatic, women may experience bothersome symptoms, including bulge symptoms, incontinence, and dyspareunia. Objectives of this video include Describe the normal anatomy of the pelvic floor Understand the proposed mechanisms for the pathophysiology of pelvic organ prolapse and understand the different management options for pelvic organ prolapse. To review the clinical aspects and management of pelvic organ prolapse, please see the APGO educational topic number 37 on pelvic floor disorders. Let's meet our patient. She is a 65-year-old para-4 who presents to clinic with concerns that something is falling out of her vagina. It has worsened over time with the bulge getting larger. She notes pelvic pressure but denies pain. She reports increased leakage of urine. Based on her history, you suspect that she has prolapse. On exam, this is what you see. You can see that the anterior vaginal wall is bulging through the vaginal introitus. You discuss with her that her exam is consistent with pelvic organ prolapse. Since the anterior compartment of the vagina is dropping, this is consistent with a cystocele. What is actually happening? Let's take a closer look. Here is the sagittal view of the pelvis with the bladder, uterus, rectum, and vagina labeled. In a cystocele, the bladder is dropping through the vaginal opening. In this image, you see the sagittal view on the right with what you see clinically on the left. Other types of prolapse include a rectocele, which is descent of the rectum through the posterior vagina. Seen in this image is the posterior vaginal wall prolapsing through the hymen. As you can see, it's about 3 centimeters in length. In addition, there also happens to be a small cystocele. Uterine prolapse is descent of the uterus. In this image, you can see the cervical os and cervix prolapsing several centimeters past the hymen. And there is also vaginal vault prolapse, which occurs after hysterectomy, and is the descent of the vaginal vault. Now that she understands what is happening to cause the bulge, she wants to know why this happened. You discuss with her that she has some of the major risk factors that put her at increased risk for pelvic organ prolapse, including aging and vaginal delivery. In fact, the risk of prolapse increases 1.2 times with each vaginal delivery. Other risk factors include menopause, chronically increased intra-abdominal pressure, constipation, obesity, pelvic floor trauma, and connective tissue disorders. To truly understand how prolapse occurs, it is important to understand the anatomy of the pelvic floor and the different levels of support for the pelvic organs. Let's pause, read, and apply. Which muscles provide the primary support of the pelvic floor? The primary support of the pelvic floor is the levator ani muscles. In this image of the pelvis, the rectum, vagina, and urethra are shown. The levator ani muscles are a group of three paired muscles in the pelvis. Drawn is the iliococcygeus. It is easier to see the other two muscles in a more sagittal plane. Again, labeled as the urethra, vagina, and rectum. This is the pubococcygeus, and this is the puborectalis. In this image, you can also see the iliococcygeus, which is inside the pelvic bone. They act as a sling and provide the foundational support of the pelvic structures. Secondary support is from the endopelvic fascia. In this image, the cervix and urethra are labeled. Drawn in blue is the endopelvic fascia. It is a fibromuscular sheath that attaches the pelvic organs to the pelvic sidewalls by a system of connective tissue above the levator muscles and includes the arcus tendineus fascia pelvis, the cardinal ligaments which attach to the cervix and extend laterally, and the uterosacral ligaments, which attach the cervix to the sacrum. The structures that support the vagina and the uterus are divided into three levels, also known as Delancey's three levels of support. Level one is apical support. The cardinal uterosacral ligaments provide apical attachment to the uterus to the sacrum. Let's pause, read, and apply. A defect in level one support results in what type of prolapse? A defect in this support causes uterovaginal prolapse. Level 2 is mid-vaginal support. The arcus tendineus fascia and the fascia overlying the levator ani muscles support the upper two-thirds of the vagina laterally. 
A defect at this level results in a cystocele. Level 3 is distal vaginal support. The urogenital diaphragm and perineal body support the distal vagina. Defects at this level result in a distal rectocele or perineal descent. Let's take one more look at the levels of support. Pathogenesis remains unclear, but is the interplay between genetic predisposition, age-related changes, and loss of pelvic muscles and our connective tissue. Women with prolapse are 40% more likely to have levator ani injury. Injury or avulsion of the levator ani typically occurs during childbirth, as seen in this image of a baby crowning. If the muscles and ligaments remain weak and do not entirely heal, pelvic support is affected, leading to prolapse. Let's take a look at this video of a patient. In this video of a cystocele, you can see asymmetry indicating a levator ani injury on the left. In this case, it is a left pubococcygeal defect, which likely contributed to prolapse for this patient. Another proposed mechanism includes age-related changes. From the ages of 20 to 59, the incidence of prolapse approximately doubles with each decade. The increased incidence of prolapse with aging may result from physiologic changes from aging, degenerative processes, and from decreased estrogen. When looking at the pelvic floor in the postmenopausal woman, there is a reduction in total collagen content. In addition, mature collagen is stiffer and more fragile. Combined, this makes the pelvic floor weaker. In addition, connective tissue abnormalities may play a role in prolapse. Women with connective tissue disorders, such as Ehlers-Danlos, are more likely to develop prolapse and incontinence. Furthermore, abnormalities in tissue repair following injury, such as during vaginal delivery, results in instability and subsequent prolapse. She would like to know what treatments are available. You discuss with her several options. You discuss whether the option of expectant management or doing nothing. Pelvic organ prolapse is generally treated if symptoms are bothersome and only really needs to be treated if there are issues with obstructed urination or defecation. Pelvic floor physical therapy is an option and may limit progression and alleviate prolapse symptoms. Vaginal pessaries can also be fitted into the vagina and provide support to the pelvic organs. Lastly, surgery is an option. There are many surgeries which include hysterectomy and reconstructive options with or without graft materials it is important to note that there is risk of recurrent prolapse with surgery. This concludes the APCO Basic Science video on pelvic organ prolapse. We have covered the anatomy and normal support structures of the pelvis, the proposed pathogenesis for pelvic organ prolapse, and management options for pelvic organ prolapse.